girls, gals, and opinionated pals. Today we're gonna be doing a video on Heartstopper, one of my most anticipated reads of this whole entire year. And did it live up to its hype? You bet your ass it did. Oh my god, these books that I'm going to attempt to show you with one hand, this might go very wrong. Okay, you all now know that I don't work out. I have no arm strength. But these four books, let's put them back now, have been in the center of my heart, my being, for the past few days. And I can't wait to unload all of this joy onto you so that we can both revel in the joy that is Heartstopper. So, this is a series that I'm doing, which is book versus movie, book versus TV show, book versus limited series, whatever have you. We want to know what media we want to consume. We want to know whether the book is what we should read and what we should consume. We want to know whether it's the movie we should watch, the TV show we should watch, the limited series we should watch, or should we just spend that time reading the book? Time is money. It's our limited resource and we should use it wisely. So what should we use it on? Today we're going to know whether we should watch Heartstopper the series or whether we should read the book Heartstopper. Spoiler alert, you should definitely read the book Heartstopper. The series did not live up to its hype. I'm gonna be discussing why, so stay tuned if you wanna know why. But if you're just here for the opinion of whether you should read the book or watch the series, read the book, please. Thank you. And goodbye, if that's all you want. Let's talk about Heartstopper now. Heartstopper begins with Charlie sitting next to Nick, which who is a year older than him but they're in the same class together. One day Nick's pen explodes in his hand and that prompts him and Charlie to begin a friendship. And this friendship is the beginning of it all. Tao, Charlie's friend, straight away catches that Charlie has this big, massive, undying crush on Nick and says, hey, Listen, me as your friend, this is a straight boy. Let's not fall for straight boys. Let's not do that to ourselves. So like back off of this crush, do whatever you can to rid yourself of it. But Charlie does not listen, which we love. We love Charlie and his sweet little heart. One day Nick comes to Charlie to proposition something and Charlie says to himself, oh my God, he's gonna ask me out. <laughs> But that's not what happens. Instead, Nick propositions Charlie to join their rugby team. And in the following pages, we have the cutest scenes of Nick and Charlie together with Nick teaching Charlie rugby. And they're so cute in doing so. You know all those cliche scenes where the boy is trying to teach the other boy how to do things? and then that's kind of their romantic moment this was exactly a copy of that scene we know what alice oseman was trying to do and she did it she did it very well i think overbreak was seeing this boy called ben who isn't out yet and he doesn't want to be out he's just toying with charlie in a way because He's just experimenting with his sexuality at Charlie's expense. So finally, Charlie gets the balls to say, hey, no more of this. I have respect for myself. And then Ben forces himself on Charlie and says, hey, I know you want me. At this moment, Nick pops up like a knight in shining armor and says, hey, he told you to stop. So stop. After this, Nick DMs Charlie to check up on him, which is so sweet and so cute. And when this happens, Charlie tells Nick all about how he met Ben, 
what had happened between them and Nick urges Charlie not to ever speak to Ben again. Tao says Nick does not look gay. This stereotyping is seriously so harmful and not it, not it at all. Nick touches Charlie casually so often that it really shows that he's not afraid of his sexuality or his masculinity and that he is okay with showing physical affection, which we love for men. More for men showing their friends or their lovers or whomever more physical affection. Nick's mother picks up on the fact about how comfortable Nick is with Charlie and says that you don't act like you act with all your other friends around him. You act like yourself around him, which was oh, such a cute moment. After a hug between Nick and Charlie, Charlie's sister remarks that he, she doesn't think Nick is all that straight. Which girl, I see you, I see you onto him. Nick and Charlie kiss after Nick tells his friends off and tells Ben off at Nick's friend's birthday. But after one of his friends calls him, he quickly and promptly gets up to leave leaving Charlie sobbing, thinking that he's just ruined his friendship with Nick. The next day, soaking in rain. I know, I know, the scene is like so cliche, but I love it, I ate it up. LSO's been fed me and I ate it up. So the next day, Nick comes soaking in the rain, and then Charlie forgives him, and then they start formally going out. I got literal butterflies when Nick kisses Charlie to shut him up during the scene. Like honestly, all the cliches are in this book and it makes for such a fun time. These books are fun books, you know what I mean? These books aren't books that are revolutionary, that are classics. These are just fun books that you will enjoy no matter who you are at what stage of life you are you are going to enjoy them you're going to enjoy these two boys falling deeply in love with each other there's just so much softness between these boys i just want to like bubble wrap them and keep them away from the world after this conversation nick looks like this which is so cute they decide to keep things a secret while Nick tries to figure out who he is, who his sexuality is, and Charlie is so so supportive in this and he says that of course he will keep it a secret until Nick truly figures out who he is, which is so sweet of Charlie. How really reminds me of a friend who was so protective over me when I got into my relationship and she constantly told me not to see this person because she didn't think that this person was good for me and that's what Tao is doing with Charlie. He doesn't think Nick is good for him because of the company he keeps. Nick's friends are all shitty people as Tao previously said and so Nick being the fucking G that he is dumps all of them for Charlie. At the end of the second book, Nick comes out to his mother as bisexual and this scene is so heartfelt and warm and relatable if you've ever been in that situation where you've had to come out. It's a bundle of tears. You will tear up reading it. It's just so heartwarming to read and a brilliant end to the second book. Now, I didn't have the third and fourth book because I just bought the first and second book the third and fourth book weren't there because the series is so popular that all of the books got ransacked from Indigo. So I jumped onto the website, I expressed shipping, put in the order for three and four, and then they came the next day and once my package came, I cried tears of joy. I really did once the books came. The third book starts with Charlie telling his parents about Nick and this is such an informative scene because Charlie's parents tell him that he did they didn't think that Nick was gay because of how he presented outwardly. And then Charlie informs them that there is no way to look a certain type of sexual orientation. Nick's friends apologizes to Nick for not telling Harry off for being homophobic and then they resume their friendships with Nick. Trigger warning, I'm going to be talking about eating disorders. So Charlie 
while on a school trip in Paris faints from not eating as much and then admits to Nick that he uses food as an exercise for control which is obviously a very very heavy thing to disclose to someone it's a very heavy thing to go through my heart go went out for Charlie at that moment and my heart also went out to Nick as being the partner of someone going through something like that it made me think of the Miss Americana documentary where Taylor Swift is saying that she uses her body as an exercise of control and then Charlie having the same thing I think that it's very difficult to be the partner of someone in these situations almost as difficult as is as it is to go through these situations because all you want to do is help the person but Nick soon finds out that you cannot help a person who does not want to get help yet who they're not ready to accept help yet Charlie's friends L and Tao finally kiss and get together. In a game of truth and dare, Nick and Charlie finally reveal to everyone that they're dating, coming out. The fourth book opens with Charlie wanting to tell Nick that he loves him. And when he finally does, Nick says it back too. Charlie doesn't want to tell his parents about his eating disorder and this leaves Nick very distraught because he doesn't know what to do to help him. And in one of the most important lines delivered in the whole series, Nick's mother says to Nick, Love cannot cure a mental illness. Charlie's struggles are highlighted in the rest of the book. And although they were hard to read scenes, it really gave me insight of what it feels like to be in the brain of someone who has an eating disorder. Now that we're done with the book, let's swiftly move on to the show and let's talk about some of the pros of the show some of the cons of the show why i think you shouldn't watch it and read the book instead or if you're just looking for a show to watch it's perfectly perfectly fine to pick this show and i'll tell you why as well the show opens with a bop of a song and charlie walks the hallways of the school while he gets a text from ben a can't wait to see you text that prompts Charlie to smile. I was so preemptively annoyed at this scene because I just know the kind of asshole Ben is going to turn out to be so I got to be annoyed. The editing style is so cute and very graphic novel-esque and you can really tell that Charlie has an instant crush on Nick. Ben is so rude to Charlie when he says hi to him in the hallway. Like I have so much <laughs> I have so much pent up hate for him. Like I want to release all that hate onto this person who, who isn't real. I have so much hate for someone who isn't real. Guys, I need help. Charlie catches Ben with his girlfriend and promptly breaks things off with him. The soundtrack for this show is absolutely amazing and it's so nice to see Nick's face seeing Charlie run as fast as he does which prompts him to ask Charlie to join the rugby team. Take a shot every time I say that Heartstopper is cute. Actually don't do that because you'll die. Drink responsibly everyone please. Charlie's background says major gay panic and honestly <laughs> that was so funny. Nick invites Charlie to his house and Charlie before ringing the doorbell kind of hesitates a little bit which was so cute. Nick is such a wholesome person. The, the smile he gives when Tara and her girlfriend kiss are so cute. Here is why I recommend the book over the show. They added the imaging arc. Now if you read the book and watched the show you know what the imaging arc is. They randomly put a girl in the show to ask Nick out and Nick says yes to the girl making me hate his character in the show even if it's for a little bit before he makes things right why would that be necessary why do you need to create a love triangle just for the sake of creating a love triangle and just for the sake of creating drama why would you do that and Nick tells his friends off for being dicks more in the book than he does in the show which really hurts my heart because like some of the scenes where the boys are being absolute bullies to Tao and Charlie 
Nick just sits there and does nothing and I'm like book Nick would never book Nick would get up and be ready to beat some ass the music in the series slaps but the whole series itself leaves a lot to be desired they dramatized everything, made Harry a bigger dick than he is in the books, if that was possible. I love Olivia Coleman, so the scene where Nick comes out to his mom is so cute. Now, so that's the end of this TV series for you. Make your decision on whether you want to read the books or whether you want to watch the TV series from this very biased opinions of mine. But yeah, these books will have you smiling ear to ear unable to put them down so i really recommend that you give them a read they deal with really heavy subject matters but put in a very light way a very accessible way to where they're very informative as well as relatable without being too preachy too judgy or too much of anything so that marks the end of the video let me know if you read the books let me know if you're gonna try and read the books let me know if you've watched the series before you saw this. Let me know everything. And also let me know if you want other book versus movie, book versus TV series, or book versus limited shows. My next video is going to be Little Fires Everywhere, the Hulu show, and the book, which is going to be very interesting to watch. And to read so that's what my next video is gonna be so please stay tuned for that and thank you so much for watching this one bye guys